that was born on the samurai battlefields of feudal Japan. Used in warfare for centuries, it's become a key component of mixed martial arts. Now we're fighting our way through Japan. From ancient samurai temples to modern police gyms. From the mega city of Tokyo to the mountaintop quiet of a samurai master. In a quest to unlock Judo's fascinating history and powerful techniques. And it's all for one ultimate goal. A fight to the finish with a Judo champ. There are hundreds of distinct fighting styles in the world. They are practiced in every nation and by every people. Now, Jason Chambers, a mixed martial artist and professional fighter. And Bill Duff, a former pro football player and wrestler. Are embarked on a mission. To explore the history and techniques of these incredible martial arts. And at the end of each journey, one of these two warriors will face the ultimate test. They'll try to survive a real fight with a true human weapon. Judo. Derived from the battlefield art of the samurai jiu-jitsu, Judo is one of the most effective fighting styles in the world. And it was born here, in the island nation of Japan. Its capital is Tokyo, and it's the largest metropolitan area in the world, with over 35 million residents. It's also the epicenter of the martial art of Judo. And many of the best judo competitors, or judokas, train here at Tokai University. Though the word judo literally means the gentle way, watching these guys, it seems anything but. To win in judo, you either throw your opponent to the ground, or force him to submit with arm breaking joint locks or deadly chokeholds. Kicks and punches are illegal, but that doesn't mean judo doesn't hurt. Modern sport judo is only 130 years old, but its history can be traced to the fighting art of the most famous warriors in history the samurai. The first samurai emerged in 9th century Japan. It was a time of civil strife, and landowners sought protection by hiring battle-hardened Japanese warriors. Initially, these warriors were little more than hired thugs. But by 1192, the samurai had gone from crude mercenaries to the ruling class of Japan. Their power was cemented when samurai general Minamoto Yoritomo established a military government. As the top officer, or shogun, he essentially became the ruler of Japan. For the next 700 years, Japan was ruled by a series of shoguns. These rulers kept their power through armies of samurai. Trained in all the fighting arts, including bow, lance, sword, and a deadly hand-to-hand -hand fighting style that came to be known as jiu-jitsu. Designed for use against fully armored opponents on the battlefield, jiu-jitsu didn't focus on kicks or punches, which would be useless against samurai armor. Instead, jiu-jitsu was built around the principle of using body position and momentum to gain dominant position with the throw, and then using eye gouging, bone breaking, chokes, and close-in weapons like daggers and chains to kill your opponent. But the throw was the key. A well-executed throw on a man wearing full armor could deliver up to an amazing 14,000 pounds of force, like having a grand piano dropped on you. And once stunned and on his back, even an armored foe was helpless. When did judo first evolve from jiu-jitsu? Professor Jigoro Kano 
Japanese educator and a great、uh, Jiu Jitsu expert, is credited as the founder of Judo.、Uh, he established his Judo school in 1882 in downtown Tokyo. Kano grew up schooled in Jiu Jitsu, but his goal was to take the overly complicated, centuries old techniques and streamline them. First, Kano eliminated all the moves that relied only on superior strength, as well as the gouges and weapons techniques, and focused on the core of Jiu Jitsu. Using your opponent's own momentum to throw him to the ground, and then using ground techniques to gain submission. Kano's new sport was called Judo. Tell us about the rules a little bit. Like, what are some of the ways you can score points, and how does the match end? There's two phases. One is the standing position,、uh, which is called tachiwaza, emphasize、uh, throws. And the other one is called newaza or tatamewaza. It emphasizes grappling. The standing phase of a judo match is a punishing version of Newton's laws of motion. As a judoka moves across the mat, his momentum is constantly shifting. Rather than meet that force with force, like in Muay Thai or karate, the idea of judo is to apply a small force of your own to redirect that energy. All throws rely on this concept. That's Ichimata, right?、Oh, But only by positioning your body in the exact right place at the exact time can you maximize the effect of your move. To lift a 180-pound man off his feet and hurl him to the mat takes about 300 pounds of force. But take that same man already moving and apply a small force to his unstable center of gravity, and even a weak judoka can hurl a much larger man many feet. If the standing phase is all about Newton. Groundwork owes its effectiveness to Archimedes. Pins, chokes, and joint locks are based on the principle of the lever. Create a fulcrum near a vital joint and use the principles of leverage to dramatically increase the amount of force you can bring to bear. Because bone is up to 40 times stronger than concrete, it's very tough to break. But joints can be destroyed with much less force. It's really an intense chess game. I mean, these guys aren't just punching back and forth. They're using each other's momentum to get their sweeps and their throws off. I can't wait to get tossed like a rag doll. Time to get dressed and hit the mat ourselves. Modeled on the Japanese kimono, the judo gi is comprised of a loose pair of pants and a heavy cotton top. As for the color, white is a traditional symbol of death and purity in Japan. For hundreds of years, samurai wore white underneath their armor to signify their readiness to die on the battlefield. That intense conviction is proudly carried on by judokas today. What would your strategy be in a judo match? Keep a low center of gravity. Don't let them throw me. If those foot sweeps start coming, then your time is pretty limited. Dojos are considered sacred ground in Japan, so we bowed before entering to show respect. Inside, we met Nakanishi Sensei, the head coach at Tokai, and his assistant head coach, Agamizu Sensei. We come all the way from the United States to learn judo, and we heard this is the best place to do it. Okay, Nakanishi Sensei said he 